Good morning and welcome to News Watch Today. I'm Gabby Matthews. And I'm Libby Lee. AB's Harvest Fest was held last weekend. And the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse is still moving forward. Summer Rottershot is here with your forecast and Ashlyn Reinhardt has our latest sports news. This is News Watch Today. Thanks for joining us this morning, and now we have Summer to give us the first look at the weather. Summer? Thanks, guys. So it is currently only 32 degrees out there, and with the wind chill, it's actually feeling like it's more in the upper 20s. And then later today, you're going to want to have a jacket because the high is only going to be 48 degrees. And although it's sunny, it's going to be pretty cold. But I'll talk more about what the week before Thanksgiving looks like in my full forecast later. Back to you guys. Thanks, Summer. I can't wait to hear more. AB's Harvest Fest took place this past weekend. Gabby Matthews has the full story. Harvest Fest is AB's annual variety show featuring skits, videos, and performances by Evangel students held at the Glories Theater. The theme this year was the game of life, and students dressed up as different video game characters and awards were given to the best costumes. Braden Nelson had this to say about Harvest Fest. I had the honor of hosting the show, which was really fun. Uh, I got asked to do that a couple months ago, and my uh, co-host Sarah Brown and I, uh, we got to come up with three really fun segments for the show. We came up with, we played Simon Says, we came up with the top 10 games will unlock your forgotten memories, <laughs> and then we played Evangel Risk, where we con conquered the campus. Uh, so overall, it was such a fun time. Just It's always a fun atmosphere, uh, Harvest Fest and Spring Fling. Uh, they're just so fun to just kind of be a part of a show that's not necessarily like really structured or like takes itself like super seriously, um, but it's just a good time to have fun. Harvest Fest this year was another success. AB has two more events at the beginning of December, Classy Christmas and Gift Card Bingo. For Newswatch Today, I'm Gabby Matthews. Back to you guys. On Tuesday during the Ahmad Arbery murder trial, which began on October 18th, the prosecution rested its case against Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael, and William Bryan. The prosecution presented evidence against the three men, arguing that they racially profiled Arbery in a white neighborhood in Georgia. The defense is stating that the men are protected under Georgia's 19th century citizen's arrest law and are claiming self-defense after both McMichaels chased after Arbery. Travis McMichael shot Arbery three times with a shotgun and Brian videotaped the incident. Last year in Kenosha, Wisconsin, a man named Kyle Rittenhouse shot and killed two men and wounded a third. The shootings occurred during a police brutality protest. Rittenhouse claims the men were attacking him and he fired in self-defense. There is video footage showing the first victim chasing Rittenhouse through a parking lot while throwing objects at him and trying to grab his gun. Evidence aside, Rittenhouse is being charged with reckless homicide, two counts reckless endangering safety, and two counts intentional homicide, all with the use of a dangerous weapon. At this time, jurors are still deliberating and have not re yet reached a verdict. On Monday around 7.30 a.m., a fire broke out at the Express Mart near North Glenstone and I-44 after a driver crashed into a gas pump and damaged another car. Luckily, both drivers walked away with no major injuries and the fuel did not cause harm to the environment. The crash caused North Glenstone lanes to be temporarily shut down and cleanup crews as well as contractors are tending to the scene. Quentin Tarantino, the director of the 1994 movie Pulp Fiction, is facing a lawsuit from the movie studio Miramax pertaining to Tarantino's plans to use seven new scenes from the film for non-fungible token sales. The lawsuit claims that the intellectual property rights of Miramax have been infringed upon by these sales after Miramax gained almost all of Tarantino's rights to the film in 1993. Miramax believes it is their right to market, sell, and profit off of NFTs, not Tarantino's. Coming up next, Evangel holds their cultural diversity event. And the director for EU Films' next movie joins us. Open up your books to page 360. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Talking about inspirational quotes. You gotta believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. 
Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. Evangel hosted a cultural diversity discussion this Wednesday night. Angelia Hernandez has more on the story. Dreaming of Diversity is a discussion-based event on several diversity topics relating to Evangel students and faculty. Socioeconomics, race, gender, culture, and ability are all topics that were discussed. Students came to share their own diversity-related experiences and got to create ideas to promote diversity around campus. When asked about the purpose of this event, Cecilia Corbin, Coordinator of Student Ministries and Discipleship, said this. At least for Crosswalk and for Kaylee as the Director of Diversity and Inclusion, a huge part of what our heart was was to hear students to know what they're interested in and then to go back and say with our time, our energy, our resources, and our efforts, what can we do to facilitate what is already bubbling up within students and stirring in their hearts. Attending a Dreaming of Diversity event is a great way for students and faculty to come together and learn more about cultural and racial changes. This is Angelia Hernandez reporting from Newswatch. Evangel University was recently given an ancient Torah scroll for the purpose of academic research and study. Though the Torah's complete history is not known, it is believed that the Torah almost certainly came from Eastern Europe, more specifically Poland, anywhere between 125 to 200 years ago. Evangel was gifted the Torah by Ken and Barb Larson, Director of Public Relations at Evangel. Aaron Hedlund says the gift was no, no longer a kosher scroll. The Torah scroll was a gift that was given to the university two years ago in 2019 um, by the owners of Slumberland Furniture. And they actually have a nonprofit organization called God's Ancient Library. And they um, acquire Pasul or no longer kosher Torah scrolls and gift them to universities around the country. The scroll is currently located in AGTS for viewing. Now we have a special guest to talk to us more about EU Films' latest movie. Isn't that right, Libby? That's right, Gabby. EU Films' new movie, Isolated, is set to release in just a few weeks. Let's take a look. Wow, and joining us today is Brady Rosenthal to tell us all about it. Brady, thank you for being with us today. All right, so Brady, um, you're a part of EU Films. Yes. What is your role? Uh, I am the director of the film this semester. Uh, I also came up with the original story idea that we are producing for this semester. Oh, wow. So how did you come up with the idea? Um, it was a meeting in the workshop. We all came together and we all brought our own ideas and we went around in a circle. And uh, it was one of the ideas that I had previously thought up. It was something that came out of quarantine, actually, uh, wow. involving isolation and what it was like to be quarantined for those two weeks. Oh, so, wow. yeah. so what is your movie called? Uh, our movie is called Isolated this semester. All right. Yes. And can you tell us a bit of what it's about? Uh, yeah, I can give you a little, little sneak peek. It's about four people who wake up in cells and they don't know who they are, they don't know where they are or how they got there, and they are being watched by cameras that are in the cells, and they try to figure out what's going on and if they can escape. Oh, wow. So how long has filming taken? Uh, filming has taken pretty much every weekend that we've had so far, um, ever since we finished pre-production, 
Um, it's, it's intense, it's a lot of filming. We're using two cameras at some times and it's just been a lot, but it's been a really, really fun experience to work with this crew. Oh, wow. So what would you say the most challenging part of filming this movie has been? Uh, definitely so far just getting our footing was probably the hardest thing was to just dig our heels in and say, all right, we have a movie to shoot now and we have to get it done. Um, so yeah, filming and just getting the ball rolling was really difficult at the start. Yeah. So do you have, what do you have to do pre-movie? Um, auditions, do you have to get it approved? Yes, yes. Uh, we had to write a script and then we also did hold auditions. And uh, both of those were processes that were, we kind of struggled with a little bit, but they were overall fun and we, we did find and fill out our cast. We have a full script, which is great because it's kind of necessary. <laughs> um, and we managed to get both those processes done in a timely manner where we could still shoot the movie. Oh, wow. How long did it take to write the script? Uh, I believe it took about two or three weeks. It took a little bit, but we got it done. So is that, were you the one that wrote the script since it was your idea, or was it? Uh, no, I handed my idea off to the writers who are Kaylee Clay and Wyatt Long. Shout out to them. They. Uh, they took my idea and we gave them a basic plot outline with ideas that we thought might be interesting in the film. And then we said, all right, write it, get back to us, and we will give you our final edits. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. So how many actors do you have? We have seven actors in total, four main actors. Oh, so. all right. And is this your first time working on a film? No. Uh, <laughs> this is my third EU film. I was previously, previously assistant director on Out of My Mind and assistant editor on Witness from last year. Oh, wow. So what would you say your favorite role has been so far? Director. It's <laughs> definitely is the most fun to uh, be in charge, essentially. Yeah. It's, it's fun telling people what to do and to have this vision and to see everybody on the crew come together and to bring that vision and help you bring it to life. Yeah. So we're not going to see you on camera anytime soon? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And what has been another movie that you have been involved on that was your favorite out of the two? <laughs> uh, I would have to say Witness. That was probably my second favorite. Uh, both, of the, both of the crews on both of those previously movies were a lot of fun, but uh, Witness, we all really stuck together and we had a tight-knit unit there, so yeah. that was really good. And do you think you'll be involved in another movie in the future? Um, maybe, we'll see. Director's kinda, director was kind of my end goal, mm -hmm. but it is, it is really fun to make these things and to make films and just getting to know crew and other people in the department. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. So how often are movies made here? Uh, movies here on campus are made once each semester. Uh, there's a class you can sign up for called Film Workshop if you're interested in taking it, or you can literally just apply directly in the communications department. They have um, they have applications that you can go and fill out, fill out, and then you can sign on for which role you'd like to participate in. All right, and can you tell us when this movie's going to be released? Uh, let me check my notes. <laughs> uh, December 9th, 2021. December. That's when this film will release. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us, Brady. Absolutely. Make sure to check out Isolated on December 9th. Back to you, Gabby. Thanks, Libby. Summer, Thanksgiving's coming up. What's our holiday weather looking like? Well, it looks like for everybody traveling home, although it may not be warm, it should be pretty good weather, but I'll talk about it more in my full forecast. Stay with us. Strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov plan.
The CDC is currently investigating an outbreak of E. coli after 10 people in the Midwest became sick after consuming baby spinach. Five of the infected people reported eating Josie's organic baby spinach within a week before they were sick. The spinach in question expired October 23rd of this year. The CDC recommends throwing away any tainted spinach and washing contaminated surfaces. If you start experiencing symptoms, please contact your local hospital. Wow, who would have thought that spinach would be contaminated? All this time I thought spinach was supposed to be good for you. So Summer, what's our weather look like the rest of the week? Well, it looks like it is going to be a nice week, sort of, once we get past that cold. Currently, it is only 32 degrees out there with five mile per hour winds, making it feel like it's about only 27 degrees outside. And it's still gonna be cold all day today, as the high is only gonna be 48 degrees out and the wind is going to be picking up to 13 miles per hour. Later tonight, our high is going to be 26 degrees, which means if you, you have any plants or anything outside, you are going to want to bring it in because the cold weather is here and it is here to stay. We see that on average, we are about eight to nine degrees lower than what we usually are as the average low is about 35 degrees and the average high is about 56 degrees. Our satellite shows us that Missouri is pretty clear for the time being, but we have this long band training up and down the East Coast, and there's some action around Florida, but taking a closer look at what that looks like in our area. So Missouri is clear. Here's the band that is training up and down. It's gonna be having mixed precipitation up in the north, but mostly rain down south. And then in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan area, there's a bunch of mixed precipitation. But like I said, Missouri, it is pretty clear for the time being. Looking at the highs across the state today, it looks like it's about to be that high 40s, low 50s, with it being 48 in St. Louis and 47 in Kansas City. So it is pretty low down across the board. Missouri is clear. Here's that mixed precipitation, even some snow up along the Wisconsin-Michigan border. And then this mixed precipitation up hitting that Canada area, but Missouri is clear. We are in this high front right now, which pushed out this rain that we just had the past couple of days, and it is going to be bringing some warmer temperatures coming up soon. Our six-day forecast, we see Friday is still supposed to be pretty cold, but then it's going to pick up when it gets to the weekend. Sunday, there is chances of scattered showers in the morning, but then looking past that into Thanksgiving week, it looks like it is going to be nice, clear temperatures. So that means for everybody traveling home for the holidays, you're going to have great travels. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Summer. Just around the corner, we'll have Ashlyn here with our latest sports. Stay tuned. My kids put these on as they were learning to walk. I want my kids to be able to have those moments with their kids. Being a scientist, I'm worried about climate change in so many different ways for my kids. From the second you have a child, you want to do everything to protect them. I think our action on climate change is no different. It's just an extension of being a mom. There is a road laid out for me. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need not see. What do you think? I know this road mm. is there for me. If I'm really free, take me down to the river and walk. An old evangel club is hosting their meetings again since the spring semester. Jacob Harris has a story. After a long hiatus, the Biblical Studies Honor Society, Theta Alpha Kappa, was able to host their first fall event on Tuesday, November 16th. This is their second event in two years. The Fall Faculty Research Forum provided the opportunity for faculty to share their research with students, allowing for the student body to hear higher academic works. Topics that were discussed include the biblical response to the orphan crisis in China, to a Pentecostal response to the feminist themes in the story of Deborah. So far, only professors in the Biblical Studies Department are able to show their research. Chapter President Levi Moberg shares more about how to become a member of this organization. 
Two ways. One, so Theta Alpha Kappa, since we are a national honor society, we do reserve membership for invite only based on GPA and major. But we do, all of our events are open to the public. We don't, other than our induction ceremony, we don't reserve any of our events for uh, members only. So to find out about our uh, events, you can find our posters hanging around campus whenever we have an event coming up, uh, checking the Cork app, or you can follow us at theta underscore alpha underscore kappa underscore EU uh, for all the updates. Be sure to be on the lookout for the Spring Forum hosted by Theta Alpha Kappa in the near future. For Newswatch Today, I'm Jacob Harris. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jacob. Libby, I'm super happy that clubs are able to get back into the swing of things after a weird school year. What do you think? Yes, I've seen many clubs around campus being able to meet now. It's great. And coming now is Ashton Reinhardt with the latest in sports. Thanks, Libby. The Evangel women's volleyball team added more individual honors to their 2021 campaign with five seniors nabbing postseason awards. Aaron Russell was named the Hart Conference Defensive Player of the Year for the third consecutive season while claiming a spot on the first team. Tori Lowry joined Russell on the first team list for her third year in a row. Bridget Peterson was named to the second team, Reagan Ansley was picked to the third team, and Jordan Stacy claimed an honorable mention spot. The seniors led the Valor to a 20 and 12 record overall with 12 conference wins, the most under head coach Mary Whitehead and several former members of the Evangel Men's Basketball Program will be inducted into this year's Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. The historic 2001 through 2002 National Championship team, including former head coach Steve Jenkins and individually former standout Nick Yoakum will be honored at the annual luncheon on December 14th. Jenkins led the team to the first program's first national championship 20 years ago with a 35 and one record. Jenkins recorded nearly 700 wins in his time at Evangel. Yoakum will be recognized as a member of the Filbert Five team, which includes Missouri high school and college players that have positively impacted the game. And just down the road, two of Jury's most renowned players got the chance to experience being in front of a full crowd once again, but this time without basketball sneakers or a uniform. 2020 graduates Haley Dieselkamp and Deja Bernard saw their former jerseys take their places in the rafters for good on Tuesday night. Dieselkamp's number 35 and Bernard's number five will never be worn by another, another Lady Panther as the powerhouse duo led Drury to a historic nationally ranked postseason run during the 2019-2020 season before COVID-19 cut their undefeated season short. Drury went on to win the game on Tuesday, 65 to 58. Gabby and Libby, I'm glad that small universities right here in Springfield are able to celebrate these accolades. What do you think? Well, I think it's great that both colleges were able to honor their players. Me too. And next up, a World War II veteran receives a birthday surprise. And after that, Summer is here with her final forecast. We'll be right back. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for mental health and other resources. Call 211 or visit 211.org. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant! Behold, the angry giant! It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. A World War II veteran received almost 800 birthday cards for her 100th birthday. Claudia Cantu's daughter was trying to gather 100 birthday cards for her mother when a local TV station got involved. The Texas General Land Office saw the TV story and posted about it online. People all over North America sent Claudia cards. She received cards from second grade students, Canadians, and local friends and family. With help from her daughter, Claudia has opened and read every card. Claudia is overwhelmed with the response and thankful for those who took the time to send a card. Wow, I wish I got 800 cards for my birthday. It's amazing that strangers went above and beyond to give her an even more special birthday and more cards than they asked for. So Summer, what's our weather looking like? Well, it is colder today, but it might pick up temperatures a little bit with the coming week. 
It looks like Friday and Saturday, the temperatures are going back up on the rise. And then Sunday, there's chances of scattered showers earlier that morning, but that should wane off as the day goes by. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, as people are traveling home for the holidays, it looks like it is going to be nice weather, only one overnight freezing temperature. So everybody should have safe travels home for the holidays. Back to you guys. Thanks, Summer. Libby, what are your weekend plans looking like? Well, I'm excited to go home for Thanksgiving. I okay. bet you're excited to see your family. Luckily, I'm a Springfield native, so I'll be staying here. That's all for today. I'm Gabby Matthews. And I'm Libby Lee. This has been Newswatch Today. Join us next week.